because we've been talking nonsense already so yeah it's a good point yeah so might as well just if if we are talking nonsense already we may as well start a podcast so hello and welcome to just not quick pod (laughs) the final cricket world cup review we've kind of slapped on it a bit i would say just because england have been bad um wait hold on wait 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 sorry wait i'm ready now i'm ready (laughs) so jamie won the fantasy crick league as you probably see if you're watching this on youtube you'll see jamo fought outlaws that's the fourth time he's won a um fantasy cricket trophy Um, in a row in a row in a row Um, Um, and yeah not great for listeners this bit like (laughs) You have to watch you for listeners. Bit, he has, um, yeah, he's got some very large sunglasses on with his headphones, looking like some big old DJ about to drop some massive like <laughs> tune in Ibiza. Um, but his, his way of celebrating, so I think congratulations go to Jamie. It's kind of, um, sort of, I think Jose Mourinho once said about football heritage, this is kind of fancy cricket heritage, but from, <laughs> from Jamie's fancy quickness, except Jose was saying it in a very salty. Oh yeah, I'm saying it in a very salty way. (laughs) Sure, but like mine has been earned. (laughs) They was very salty after a defeat. This is proper fantasy crit everything. Yeah, I mean it's just the the normal. The normal here we are. Um. So yeah, congratulations, Jamie. Um. He'll never bestow his secrets. It's it's. I don't know how he does it, but here we are. Um. And the World Cup is over. So I feel on two sides pretty crap about this <laughs> so i'm wearing my green top for green for envy because one obviously jamie easily won the fancy crick um four times almost like for the fourth time in a row for the fourth time in a row um almost with kind of un you know unchallenged almost like india were looking like they were going to um until the team i had completely written off and completely thrown out of the bus <laughs> decide to turn up and jamily win the whole thing so uh, my humble pie is in the oven i will get it ready at some point during the pod um but on two fronts i feel like how do it's I... two pies surely one for fantasy one for australia <laughs> probably i do like pie um <laughs> um but oh gosh so so congratulations we got that out of the way congratulations jamie that is on the on the audio um and i guess congratulations australia um i i would say i didn't see this coming but i you know we mentioned it before our mutual friend ollie who is also in the fantasy league just was calling that australia were going to win not really i guess kind of based off the logic that they were kind of playing at times badly but still winning and finding ways to win um it was but, like off of a narrative standpoint yeah. like everything's building up for india Mm-hmm. to win yeah but you've got to have this shock plot twist yeah somewhere yeah yeah and like statistically speaking you're going to lose a game eventually yeah like it's not as simple as heads or tails in cricket there's so many variables going on mm-hmm. but like india won 10 games in a row yeah so that's gonna like stop eventually yeah like loads of Football competitions have the eventual winners lose a very early game yeah. in like the group stages. India didn't really have that. Well, Australia yeah. did. They lost literally their first two games. Yeah. And then got into their group. Whereas yeah. like, it was yeah. going to be a bump for India at some point. They just happened to be the last and most important. Game. <laughs> just in front of 130,000 people and their. Uh... Um, Prime Minister, which is we'll get onto. Um, a, a, it was just and David Beckham and David. Well, he was reason. at the semi, I think. I think semi, uh, I think he wasn't well, at the final. Final still um, for some reason. For some reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, because I could easily say that. I mean, I've already said it. I could say that it's a jammy World Cup. I could say it's like they've, you know, managed to have a lot of luck, which they have had luck. They have had teams that, you know, have had the better of Australia in at least three games, so I can think of the top of my head, um, but then have let that kind of grip on the game slip um, most of the time, literally by letting the ball slip through their hands and dropping their most important batters. Um, but I guess the flip side of that, 
you can have all this luck but it's also how you react to it like you can you know like for Maxwell for example sure he gets dropped in that game against Afghanistan um but after that he doesn't give another chance and you know he gets one well probably the best ODI innings you've seen in recent times or ever um so you know it's capitalizing on that and I think there's got to be some kind of respect for that um in the way that they can you know take take that advantage and make it their own and completely capitalize you know they had no reason to beat afghanistan when they're about 81 for seven or 90 odd for seven in that game they were completely out of it um but you know they found a way to win you know against pakistan warner got dropped very early on but then capitalized get a mammoth score um Sri Lanka got off to a great start, about 120 odd for none in that game on the bounce of Australia losing to, but then pulling it back and, you know, Australia bowling really well at important times. So you have to say, although they had a lot of luck, I guess in sport, you make your own luck and you have to make the most of it. And I think Australia did at every turn, is my hypothesis. They're just really good at finding certain scenarios in which they can win yeah like, i don't think they've played fantastically throughout the tournament but they no. just like sort of hone in on something that gives them an advantage just very minuscule and like yeah, sure. something that was very evident in the final was just how buzzed they were in the field like yeah. they were not letting anything no, go no. past them they were they hated the ball if that ball went past them that was the yeah. end of their life <laughs> yeah just like the row hits wicket, like it was a poor yeah. shot. Really. Yeah. But like head still took a yeah. sudden catch from that. Yeah, exactly. Which is what you need, especially when it's someone like Rowett and in a final, like yeah. and huge. It's, like that's not even considering the ballsy decision for Cummins to oh, put he, here yeah. into bat. Like everyone was against him as soon as he had called that. Because you know, the the pass past this World Cup is you have to bat first. And you know, for him to come out and say we're gonna have a bowl, everyone was like, Oh, appalling decision, what are you doing? But you have to say you know, that's bold, that's courageous, that's trusting in your ability as a team and seeing what you think is a, you know, potential favourable position and then taking it. Like, it could have been very easy to be like, oh, the World Cup said you have to bat first, we'll bat first. But, you know, you've got to give it to him. It's gutsy. Yeah, like, even in the semi-final, they, they had a spell where Maharaj and Shamsi were really on top of them. I can't remember. Yeah, who, that was a great game, 100%. But, yeah. Yeah. But they just find a way to win, like, yeah. grind through it. Like yeah. South Africa had a few drop catches. I don't think there were any, like, yeah, give me catches. Like they're all half chances, but I would say South so. Africa, yeah. You need to take them. Yeah, yeah. Again, there's like, there's moments in that game where again we could be talking about a different scenario entirely. Like I think there was even at the very end, like Cummins was on about one or something, and then De Kock drops him. You know, and you know, Cummins goes on to as he is somehow doing all the time now, be a finisher and win the game. Um, but you know, if he gets out, that brings Zampa in and Hazelwood, who you know are not renowned for the batters, less against England. Um, so it could have gone, but again, like they didn't take the catch, so Australia go on and win it. But that, yeah, I thought that semi final game was a great game, much better than this, <laughs> but like because that was just two teams really just fighting it out like you know South Africa just throwing everything being like Shamsi and Maharaj are just going to bowl through you Australia don't tend to play spin well this pitch is spinning and then we're going to really put the squeeze on put the pressure on I thought that was a great game and I think South Africa you know we're not going to talk about them that much I guess in a final review but I thought they've had a great World Cup and I you know I, I don't think you'd call that semi-final a bottle by any stretch of the imagination the way David Miller played was great and the way they kind of rallied to really try and make a game of it was a real great watch. Um, and the same to New Zealand against India in their game, chasing about 400, getting, you know, within about 60 when at one stage Daryl Mitchell and Williamson were going along really, really well and it looks as though they could potentially do something special. Um, so, yeah, I think the top four teams, or well, the best four teams were the ones who got into semis. Um, and you would say that India and Australia were obviously the best two of the World Cup. Like you said, India winning 10 on the bounce. Australia now winning yesterday, winning nine on the bounce. Um, consistently, just the two best teams. But yeah, I mean, taking aside the or, or Ashes Australia rivalry, I just found yesterday very funny. <laughs> um, 
I guess we'll get the scorecard up for Go people on. who forgot. Um, so uh, India all out for 240. Um, going at one stage, I think it's about uh, many, many and overs <laughs> without even scoring a boundary. I think it's about 15 overs or something, maybe yeah. even more. Um, but just never looked like they could get going. Um, you know, you had a good start from uh, Rohit. Um, Cody got 50. Uh, Rahul got a painstaking 66 of 107. Um, but just nothing really much else. And just it just really looked like they were limping along. And it felt like this is the most difficult pitch you've ever played on in your life. Um, and, you know, Cummins could turn to bowlers like Travis Head and Mitchell Marsh and just let them bowl little kind of chop out overs um, and, you know, not have any damage inflicted at all. Um, but yeah, it was just a very odd innings. I think Australia bowled really well. Like you said, they fielded really well. They were electric in the field, took all their chances. Um, Cummins was exceptional with the ball, really kind of left from the front. He didn't concede a boundary in his 10 overs, which I think is a wild stat. Um, but yeah, I mean, would you say this is more of, I guess it can always be both. Would you say it's more of Australia reading the game better and playing better? Or do you think India, do you say choked a bit or felt the pressure a bit? You know, a home final in front of that crowd, the expectation that they're just going to win. And then you come up against a very good Australian bowling side who are on it. And it's sort of like pressure tells. It was weird because whenever they've been in that situation of being three down or something like that, like they've always continued to go and try and score at a decent rate. Yeah. So there's, for some reason, they decided to go back into their shell. Yeah. Like it wasn't like Sky and Jadeja were still to come. Like, yeah. And Kohli and Rahul have gotten great scores. Kohli's the literally the highest, yeah. the leading run scorer for the tournament. So it was a strange, like mindset shift mm -hmm. yeah. when they didn't need to, especially after Rohit, who should have been going on a bit more throughout the whole tournament. He's got a, like a few too many forces, yeah. but still a great tournament. And he's always setting the tone in that order. Yeah. But for some reason, they just didn't like follow on from no. that, like they've been doing. So it, like maybe it was the pressure. Maybe, I think it was, being in a final, they didn't feel the need to go as hard. Yeah. Like, final scores are usually a bit smaller than the tournament average, I would assume. Yeah. So I thought, like, maybe they like, were thinking, if Kohli and Rahul are in there long term, we'll eventually yeah. build a bit of a partnership and yeah. a solid base for, to take them on in the last 10 overs or something, which didn't yeah, it just never happened. happened. It like, just limped. Even when Sky came in, who you would assume would be the one to pop off, it just didn't really. Yeah, going and like they were relying on like Cold Deep and Shami for. Yeah, just trying to leak. Oh. It, it it felt like they the both two teams had a different idea of what was a good score. Like I feel like India felt they could get to two fifty ish, mm -hmm. and it'd be like, oh, we got the spinners, it'll be fine. It'll be enough. Um, what's come and said after the game, which I guess is easy in hindsight, but he thought that you know they did really well to restrict to two forty and would have been happy chasing three hundred, which I guess in hindsight is also likely, but you don't know scoreboard pressure. So I don't know whether they had two different thought processes, but you know Rohit said he would have batted anyway, and that scorecard to me doesn't really say that you're going to bat first of any kind of positivity. But I mean, I guess the pitch and I think India have had lots of success this tournament by playing on um high scoring pitches and things like that and this is obviously a much more slower much more tricky pitch to go on but at the same time you kind of expect them in their home conditions to i guess adapt to it and they just didn't at all which is it's not as if they don't have the bowlers to utilize that sort of pitch either i know yeah exactly it's bizarro um but i mean a shout out to australia's bowlers um mitchell stark again in a final um performing 355 setting the tone Hazelwood two for sixty, yeah. Stark and um, Hazelwood start was just again on the money, um, which you want from them, even when you have someone like Rowett going at you. Um, they just always would stick to their lengths and you know pay dividends in the end of the wickets. Um, Maxwell chipping in a wicket, 
Cummins again mentioned bold excellently. Um, and Zampa getting one wicket as well, being right up there with leading wicket takers in the tournament, which is ridiculous considering his form in the first two games was non-existent. Um, so as a unit, I think they've developed as a side and, you know, really grown um, and having to adapt their kind of balance as well with Head coming back in and going back and forth between Cameron Green and Stoyness and all this kind of stuff. Um They've just been able to adapt every time, even with their team changes. Um, but you know, they bowl well, good stuff, GG's. They've, <laughs> um, always, every... they've always had like the advantage of having one or two extra, maybe even three, like all yeah. rounders as well. Like Mitch Marsh yeah. is always there, Maxwell can bowl a bit. They just yeah. throw in Travis Head when they feel like it. Yeah, exactly. Like compared to India, they've got five bowlers, one of whom is a uh, proper genuine all-rounder you can do anything yeah. in Jadeja. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they don't have anyone else no. to go to. Like if they had Pandia in this instead of yeah. Guy, maybe, I think yeah. that would be a better balance for the team. Yeah. Overall. That was obviously what they started out with, wasn't it? Then Pandia getting injured just obviously changed up their balance completely. Um uh, and they, they, they didn't they have Shami in the, the start though, did they? Yeah, exactly. But, no. Yeah. Yeah. Which is bizarre. Yeah, like, and no Ashwin as well. No, I. That was the one area I think India could have done something with. They didn't have enough bowlers, so if they needed some random to bowl a couple here yeah. or there, because one of their prime bowlers were being targeted. Yeah, you're looking at going to Kohli and Rohit, really, who yeah. bowled against Netherlands. It's like yeah, great. Curry did get a wicket, which I'm sure everyone will happily remind us about. Um, but yeah, you're right. There's not enough balance. There's not enough go to different kind of options, and it's. I think every other team, literally, yeah. in the competition, yeah. has yeah. that. Like certainly, all the semi finalists. If you look yeah, at exactly, like, Ravindra was taking wickets for New yeah. Zealand. You've got Mark from for South Africa. Yeah. Like even and then, England, yeah. England is shit. Yeah. And. <laughs> Joe Even without Stokes, they have you know people they turned. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but you know, for Australia, even you know Mitchell Marsh, you would probably say is more of a batting all rounder and more of a bowler than someone like Travis Head. But Travis Head coming in and getting a wicket of um, I think it was Clarkson in the semi final, which is huge. That's massive. Like yeah, he got two in that game as well. Didn't he? I think he did. It yeah. was definitely one of those. He definitely got Clarkson, but I can't remember the other one. But um, that's that makes such a difference. You know that's. Not one of your main bowlers getting one of the most dangerous batters in the world out in a semi is huge. Like, um, you can't discredit that at all. But um, so yeah, they got two forty all out, um, which is no good. Um, and then Australia, uh, chased it down with ease with seven overs to spare with six wickets in hand. Uh, this was a drubbing. I guess it didn't look like at one point. Um, it was forty seven for three. It was the. Did you see the start? It was one of the most frenetic, bizarre starts to a game I've ever seen. Oh, no, I thought the gap between innings was a bit longer, so I completed uh-huh. all of the wickets. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, but it was it was mental. Like there was um 16 off the first over. There was a um a missed chance from India, which is ridiculous to say considering how they've been in the tournament. Um of Warner edging through um, I think it was Kohli. And uh, Shirat Ayer at second slip, first and second slip, by none of neither of them going for it, which I think just kind of set the tone mm-hmm. from the very start, that being that ball one. Um, and then uh, Warner got a boundary and Head got a couple, and it's suddenly a 16 for none off, off one. Um, and then uh, Warner's out second over, first ball, the second over. Um, and then Marsh comes in and just absolutely smashed it all over the place. He got only got 15 from 15, but he just came out with just absolute intent and just big old levers, just like smashing. I think it was Bumra for six over cover. Um, and then you got heads going along as well, but then you got Shami bowling five wides for a couple of times, I think definitely once and definitely a few wides down the leg side. Um, but it just felt like this is Australia seizing some initiative being, I think, yeah, 40 for 41 for one off four overs or at least 40 for they going at 10 and over. And then March uh, got out eventually. Um, But it just kind of showed they were going to come out 
guns blazing and just take it to India. Um, India, I think, really missed a trick. I felt as though they were hiding Siraj a lot. Siraj had opened the bowling with Bumrah throughout the entire tournament. And in the final, they then opened with Shami. And you could kind of tell, as well as Shami's bowled throughout the tournament, that he hasn't been opening the bowling and suddenly he's getting more movement with the ball and it's going down the leg side and he's giving away wides. And it's sort of like, I know he's really in form, but your plan has been Boomer and Siraj all tournament and now you're changing it, at, you know, when you've not really got a score to defend. Sure, you can bring on Shami after a couple of overs if it's not gone well, but surely you just stick with what you've done. It's kind of saying to Siraj, being like, we don't think you're good enough for this, mm -hmm. but Shami is. And I just think that was just such, in hindsight, obviously it's a thing, but at the time it's like, why, why are you changing what you've done, which is obviously won you 10 games? Um, I don't even think in hindsight, I think it was just a mistake. Bizarre. You could yeah. see in real time. like Yeah. Like those two have been keeping it tight from the front. Yeah. Then Shami's come in to be there. Just finish everything off in 10 overs, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, game yeah. plan at all there seems like there was a like a discrepancy between the plan and the execution or yeah what the players i don't know it, yeah something it's, didn't for sure didn't click at all it, it really felt like that was when the pressure was being felt and i could you could always like see it from the way that they were misfielding the way the wides were going down it just felt like we haven't got enough runs <laughs> oh dear <laughs> what are we doing it just felt like they were just throwing everything at it even the wicket which Shami got of Warner in the second over was just a rank wide ball that Warner just slashed at like it wasn't a good ball sure it got the wicket but it was just if it had been left I think it would, probably would have been all wide Um, it was just a weird start from you know a, such a good team Um, but then they kind of pegged it back pretty well they got Smith out um, Bumrah uh, getting two wickets in the end, um, Smith out for four, an LBW, which Smith didn't review, but hit him outside the line, um, which is Steve Smith that kind of feels like renowned player who would review most things, given the calibre of player he is, but the fact he didn't review was odd, and then it was quite easily outside the line as well, so that was odd. Um, but then it was just the kind of Travis Head show with kind of Manus playing... Um, support act um so head uh finishing 137 um out for 137 the multiple of the game um and then minus 58 not out of 110 um dogged kind of stuff but uh, going at strike right at 50 but you just you get, you're getting the job done you're just hanging with head which right, is what you need cricket. yeah yeah i mean they I remember watching it and they were just slating Minus to how he was playing and by not getting enough singles or scoring quickly enough, but it's sort of like there's no you need to go three or four and over. What's the, I mean, you don't worry about the it. Start, they needed less than five and over, yeah, didn't they? Like, yeah. and then the opening that can sort of set the tone, and they don't need to no. go after exactly. it. They can, yeah. like, head can hit a four and then rotate yeah. strike, and then Manus can see out the over and get singles every now and then, and that's yeah. pretty much exactly what they did what happened yeah like they executed clear. It perfectly. Clear they... clean yeah yeah they knew exactly what they and yeah i think i i guess a little shout out travis head as well if you list <laughs> yeah <laughs> um just a little one for his man of the match performance in a world cup final in i will say India against hosts india <laughs> in front of a crowd of a hundred little shout out thousand, just a little shout oh, well. out um he came into this tournament with a broken hand, so he was in the squad and he wasn't fit, so he couldn't play in the first, I think, four or five games. So it's, they had to take a big old risk in selecting him. Um, and then he's finished the tournament with 200 in the 50, and one of them being in the final. And it looked a bit dicey early on in his innings when he was getting a bit movement, gets with Boomer and things like that, and a lot of went past the outside edge. But from about that kind of 15 over mark onwards, he just looked flawless. <laughs> it just looked like it was very easy game suddenly you know the dew was coming down it's easy to score ball was coming onto the bat Jadeja and cool deep were just completely nullified um he was just sweeping loads sixes into leg side and um, brilliant um it just looked like he was playing a completely different pitch to everyone else no man has stuck in for a 58 but no one else played with fluidity and you know ease that head did and quite rightly that's the difference between the two teams um 
you know, he's, he's turning out to be a very special player. Um, you know, he played very well in the last two Ashes, which is all that matters, let's be honest. Um, he he um got 100 in the World Test Championship final as well against Injuries 2. Um, and on the back of being dropped in Australia's India tour for the test matches because they thought he couldn't play spin well, but this is kind of <laughs> kind of a bit of all there you go. Um he's just been in, in such a rich vein of form at the moment. Just he's doing it against every opposition. And you know, this out of all Australia's performances, this is easily the best one. And I think a lot of that is typified by Head's inning. He sort of like encompasses the entire year for Australia as a whole. Like World Test Champions, retain the Ashes, World Cup winners. Yeah. It's been a pretty good year for them. They've had a great year, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they did lose in India, but they only lost 2 1 in the end, which is quite good. Yeah, but they also um, won in India. They won a World Cup in India, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> but I think they'll um, take that. I don't think they'll yeah. like losing that one if they win the other no, one. No, but I mean, I'm saying, like, as for, as terms of losses go in India, I think losing 2 1 in a five match test series is, yeah. is not bad. I mean, that's pretty good from the way they, I think they lost the first two quite badly. And then to pull it back like that, I think it's good going. Um, and then, like I say, retain the Ashes, win a World Test Championship, and then win a World Cup that at one stage looked like they had no right to win. Um, but the most important question is, can they win the T20 series that is starting on Thursday against India? All I want <laughs> to see is um, every Australian player wearing their medals in like the <laughs> opening ceremony while the national anthems are going. God's sake. It's like... Parade like their B team parading the World Cup around yeah. the stadium against India's B team. And I just want to see them. That's what you want to see? Uh, yeah, I want to see them ball some tips. Yeah. I want them to really banter. <laughs> India. What an absolute waste of time! It's the same as last year in the twenty twenty um, World Cup. There's that stupid Modi I series against um, England Australia after England had won it and everyone's already drunk and doesn't care. What's the point? Um, but oh well, there we are. So. Australia did it with ease, and I think India bowled as bad as they have done all tournament. Um, there was no kind of potency, no control, no real aggression. Um, and no, yeah, it's just it, everything went wrong. <laughs> like, there's not really anything good that's come out of this game for India. I think it's just completely just all the wheels just fell off at the wrong time. Um, I'd say apart from Rohit start and, you know, Cody batted well, but it just felt that Australia just had a complete grip on this game and never let go, in my opinion, anyway. It, it was two different mindsets from the start. One, yeah. taking the game by the balls and saying, this isn't getting fucking away from us. We're fucking yeah. up for this. Versus, we're just going to chill and vibe through yeah. it. We'll have the crowd push <laughs> us through and we'll get a tidy 250. Yeah. Like, Which they didn't fuck, even get. Fuck it, 280 at least. Fuck it. <laughs> Not having this. <laughs> Just back the overs, back the overs. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think like you said at the very beginning, like it had to happen. Like India had to lose a game, and it obviously was going to be the final when they had everyone there, um, including uh their prime minister, uh Modi. Um, did you see the presentation? Uh, I think so. If it was this little thing you saw sent in the, group, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> like, where I, it was, I'm confused. What? <laughs> Go, where is everyone? <laughs> It's just such a bizarre thing. So you had, I think it was the, um, not the Australia, I think it was the Deputy Prime Minister for Australia. And then you had um, the Prime Minister of India. Um, I believe it is Narendra Modi presenting Pat Cummins of the trophy. Um, and it's on this big old stage with champions on it. And you've got Modi giving, I guess, what he'd expected to give um, Rohit Sharma the trophy. Um, and he ended up giving... Pat Cummins. Uh, no, I, I bet he expected to give it to Virat Kohli. Yeah, just give it. To... <laughs> you're not I know you're not captain, captain but you can have sure. it. This is your World Cup, Virat. <laughs> so he gives it to Pat, um, and then <laughs> Pat's just kind of standing there awkwardly because, like, do I celebrate by myself <laughs> or do I? What do I do? And then Mo just sort of awkwardly shuffles away, and then fireworks are going off, and he just got like so. Pat Cummins just standing there, sort of just like looking sheepish, and you know just. Normal, like normal, happy looking self, being like, I'm, What am I doing? He should have just... fainted to lift it up. Like, 
don't actually celebrate it be like oh, i'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> go. <laughs> it's just brilliant it's just it just showcased everything that was obviously going to be happening when india didn't win because you know if india had won it it would be the whole team there it would have been cody over the trophy it would have been scenes but it was just so quiet subdued it's not india winning it if he had been like, I don't care about this, <laughs> like, and then him going along and shaking hands with all the Australian players before they can even go up to Pat Cummins. So you've got this awkward like delay as he's going through each player and they have to go up to say, um, big old stage. And then Pat is just waiting for everyone to still come. And then all the fireworks are gone by this point. And then they do the thing. It's like, it took us like five minutes to get to that. It was just so awkward, but I loved it. It's just a, small symptom of the larger shit show yeah the world cup how it's been organized with yeah. like people not being able to get tickets like up until the start with <laughs> just this shit 10 team group stage yeah going into three knockout games oh god and the like the difference in the icc rules and the yeah cc rules with helmets and timing out and... pitch changes Ah, uh, honestly, shambles. It, it ended in the most narratively perfect way, and I'm I'm glad it did. It was just great to watch. <laughs> I just, I'm glad I wasn't going to watch it, but I'm so glad I tuned in to see that presentation. <laughs> the best bit of the game, right? So now the tournament is over. <laughs> Let's do our besties. Um, so I mean, I've not done one, but um, I've got the. <laughs> I've got the um official ICC one, which basically is right and cannot be um contradicted, apart from yours, Jamie, which you've got. Um so how do you want do you want to go through the ICCs first or do you want to go through yours first? Uh do we want to go through mine? Because I've got a couple of Okay. Uh, Let's go through yours. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. Cool. So openers well I think openers and three will be Slightly, but not really controversial until we get okay. To... Three will yep. be more controversial until we get to four. Right. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so, like openers, it I've got between Decock, Rohit, and David Warner. Okay. I'm leaning towards Decock and Rohit. Yeah, I'd agree. I want to. I think Warner is very close to going in there, but Decock literally got four. I... Yeah, Decock's had a brilliant tournament. Like you know, any other tournament probably he's in the winning side for that kind of form. Um, you know, he's completely taken apart teams um, from the start and has looked his best. I've seen him bat in a long, long time. And it's kind of sad that a player getting 400s can't be in a winning team. And, you know, that's his last ever ODI outings as well. I think it's got to be Decock. Um, the way he's played has just been exceptional, I think. And yeah, yeah Rohit, yeah. Like third highest run scorer, something like that. Captain yeah, has been really good. Yeah, really good, definitely. Yeah. Would agree. Like, it's nothing against Warner. Uh, these two. No, of course, definitely not. No, uh, But um, number three, uh, yeah. Rakin Ravindra. Yeah, I think he definitely deserves to be there. Yeah, it's only controversial because there's another He's player that had, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're at the top. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the controversy yeah. ends because only because he's been batting at three, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. But they so, both get in. I think they've both exactly. been, you know, they. I think is it is it um Ratchin second leading run scorer or is he third? I think he's up there, isn't he? Um, yeah, essentially second, I think. Or he might actually might be lower than that. I might be getting it completely wrong. Um, he's top five. At least. <laughs> he'll be top five. Um, he is for our listeners. He is fourth. So it's Coley, Rowett, Decock, Ravindra. So you know. As should be, they probably all deserve to be in that top four, like you've said. Yeah, and Warner is fifth, I think. Yeah. Uh, Warner is uh, sixth. Ah, fair enough. So at, at number five, I've gone Daryl Mitchell. He's just had yep. a very solid tournament throughout. Yep, I agree. Uh, this is another up for debate mm-hmm. one. Of, it's between Glenn Maxwell and KL Rahul. I'm gonna, I'm leaning okay. towards Maxwell. Yeah. Primarily because of that 200. Yeah, he did also get a blistering innings. I think, was it the fastest ODI 100 in the World Cup against yeah. Netherlands as well, I think. Um, I, I just think that innings against Netherlands, the fact that the last 150 or whatever it was, or even less than that, whatever, was on one leg. 
And, you know, it was just, you know, he he had to score all the runs. Cummins only got about 10. And the fact that he was able to still hit the ball out of the ground whilst, you know, severely cramped up and injured was extraordinary. So I think he gets in that innings alone. I can't, I could not tell you one innings of that Kao Rahul was played. Like, <laughs> he's, he has got scores and he's been he has, yeah. keeping when he's not a, yeah. like a frontline keeper. Yeah. I, I, I mean, he's thrown out yeah. into the debate because he's had a. Yeah. He's had a great one, yeah. He's yeah, he scored 452 runs, Rahul, um, at an average of 75 and a highest of 102. Um, good strike rate as well, being a good middle order player, um, consistently getting a lot of not outs as well, which will help boost the average 100, 250s. Um, compared to Maxwell, who has 400 runs, uh, average of 66, uh, 200s, um, but one of those hundreds being 201 not out. I, but yeah, I mean, I just he has to be in that team. I mean, like, as as much as I have jested with the dangerous Glenn Maxwell in the past, and um, you know, this was he he did put on some real kind of show stopping performances, um, which you know I don't think we'll ever see anything like that again. So I think he deserves to be there for sure. Yeah, and but he's bowled well as well. He's been a, he's kind of been a tidy bowler, um, and helpful at, at times when, especially early on when Zampa wasn't bowling too well. Yeah, sure. But another. Uh, for debate one is Jadeja versus Janssen as like those two yeah like properly full on all rounders and this is yeah. probably the one where I'm most torn on because like Jadeja has come in in innings and got decent scores but yeah has like tailed away with the ball especially like in the semi and the final yeah that, it just okay wasn't there hold deep but I think that was the same for all spinners. Like, yeah. Zampa only got one wicket in both the semi and the final. Yeah. I think it was only really Maharaj and Shamsi that, like, looked really on it. The, yeah, the I game. think... Like, Santana didn't get anything in the semi. Um, yeah, Santana had a brilliant tournament, then just, like you said, also, <laughs> just the spinners kind of just went nowhere. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's uh, just so Jadeja's stats, 16 wickets at 24 uh economy rate of four um which is really good um and you know he is a bowler in india that is most of the time unplayable so the fact he didn't do really much in the knockout games is surprising uh jansen 17 wickets at 26 um i would say though i think he had a very poor semi mm -hmm. um i think south africa win that game if jansen had been on it but he was very kind of wayward i don't know whether it was a nerves thing or the due factor but um yeah, he was was called upon towards the end um, when they really needed something to squeeze the game, and he just, you know, leaked runs quite a lot. Which he's still young. Um, he, he still had a very good tournament. And I think he will come again. Right. Um, so instead of either of these, I've got another option. Okay. Because I've ben got Stokes. Um, no, Je I like considering Bumrah versus Gerald Curtsy, but what if we go yeah. five bowlers put Curtsy okay. in this spot? And then Kirtley Bumrah both getting the team. Because I think the way Kirtley came into the South African team and just started taking wickets. And like, yeah. I don't think you can really take Bumrah out. He's got 20 plus wickets. I, I, yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, I, you're I would two in from those four, and I don't really know. But I would say Kirtley offered you raw pace um, in the way that and Bumrah is brilliant. And he's, you know, he's one of the best in the world. But if you're looking for differences slightly, I, I guess Kutsi offers a bit more pace. I think they've be, I think they've both had very similar to, they've both got 20 wickets. Uh Boomer at an average of 18.6 and Kutsi an average of 19.8. I thought he bowled really well in the semi Kutsi against Australia. He really dragged Africa right back into it at one stage where it looked like the game was going away. Um Boomer wasn't quite able to find that thing in the final. Um, or that kind of drive, but you know he's excellent. It's really difficult to choose it's between the two like throughout the entire tournament, though, isn't it? Which yeah. Is why it's kind of tough to take Jadeja out. Yeah. Well, I agree. Um, like, for the balance of the team, I've also got Rack and <laughs> Glenn Maxwell to buy some parts. Yeah. So I could just put. I'm putting Gerald Kirsty in the fuck you. Okay, so screw that, Bumrah. Or are you keeping Bumrah instead of Jade you? No yeah, Jadeja. Going, no Jadeja. No Janssen. Okay. Bomber. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, fair. And then you got three more, I think. I've got three more. Shami 
no debate. Yeah, that's needed. yeah. Also with Zampa. Yeah. No debate needed. Yeah. Maybe some debate about the last one, but I'm not hearing it. Madushanka. No, I agree. Yeah, Madushanka I, definitely. One of the best bowlers in the tournament. And I think yeah. it's even it's elevated by him playing for Sri Lanka as well. Like we yeah. can, like he's Sri Lanka are playing harder teams more often than yeah, yeah, they're always against it, definitely. Yeah. yeah, and just he was a go-to fantasy player as well. I knew I could just put him in. You can always bank on him. Yeah, like you and the Phantom wouldn't be particularly like confident enough to yeah. captain or vice captain him, so I could just go fuck it. Or yeah, vice thing today, Bill Shannon. And yeah, pull it off. So I don't care. Yeah, He's in it for my heart. <laughs> and he won it. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, the ICC one is mostly similar. They have been swayed more with the likes of Jadeja and things like that. Um, well, they're wrong, but they need Gerald Curtsy in there. <laughs> Curtsy isn't there, but the one missing is no ratchet, which I think is rubbish. So I assume they've just put Coley in at three, and so Quinton oh. Rowett, Virat, Daryl Mitchell, Kale Rahul, Glenn Maxwell, Jadeja, Bumrah. Madhushanka, Zampa, and Shami. Um, I just think Ratchin gets over Rahul in that, surely. Like, if if you're picking those, I think you have to have Ratchin think, in there. Yeah, I think they're literally just going best opener, best opener two, best yeah. number three. In which... But then you can't even say like Rahul is being best keeper because Quinton's the keeper. They they in their team they even put Quinton as the keeper. So you don't need Rahul. Like I mean, but I mean, are they going through the orders one as an order? Yeah, I mean, I guess. Which but... like it would make sense. Kohli going in over Ravindra. Yeah. Three. So is Rahul the best six throughout the tournament? Maybe. 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 But um. I'm... But I think he I, deserves to be in that team. He's he's in your top four leading run scorers of this tournament. You know, he's so young. He's had such a great... Like Kedzi, he has had such a breakthrough tournament and has looked completely up for it. So his just stats are just... I don't think I mentioned them before. So 578 runs, um, right up there with Sharma and Decock, who only got, at most, about 20 more than he has. You know, if he had played another game, he would have outscored Rowett um, and Decock. Um, oh, I guess the cock in the same team, but not he, had, he could play another game to cock as well. Who knows? But he's only 20 runs behind those two who are both season pro exceptional players. He's just breaking through and he's got 578 runs, 300s, uh, 250s, uh, average of 64, strike rate of 106 as well. Um, playing instead of Williamson as well, for the most part. And then, you know, making almost a difficult selection choice in New Zealand because they can't drop him when Williamson comes back. Um, you know, I think he's been, for me, the player of the tournament up there, you know, Coatsy. I think that that's, it's good to see these young players performing whilst, you know, teams like England have been very much like, let's run on previous highs of these great, slightly aging players. Whilst you've got those two, for example, up and coming young players who've just come in and just shown why they need to be at the biggest stage. Um, I think they've been the best things to watch, to be honest. Yeah, if I had to like pick a player I want to watch throughout this yeah. podcast, it'd probably be Ratchin. Yeah, he's just been so free and yeah, like some of the shots he's been playing, you can tell he's new to yeah. it just because he's got no shackles on him. Yeah. But that's yeah. only helped him as well. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I still think Kane should have been opening with Conway and having giving Ratchin that's that great. little bit of protection as a three. Yeah. But like he also got a hundred opening as well. So Yeah. Yeah. And basically opened the first game against England. So it's not like he's unable no. to yeah. No, good point. Um but I prefer my team anyway. Yeah, I do as well. Like as as good as Rahul was played. And not discrediting Rahul, um, I think the four not outs do give him a bit more of a boosted average than he would normally yeah. have. Um, it's under the radar tournament versus legitimately badder. Yeah, tournament agree. talking yeah. in the same vein as Kohli, Dukok, Sharma. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, and, and he's taking like said, wickets as well. Like he's not just. Yeah, don't forget that. Yeah, good point. That's it. Like oh, I had forgotten that. <laughs> like literally offered 
legitimate like options of the book. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I see if I can find his statos, um, which is always great listening for our listeners. I try and find stuff. So he got five wickets. He did average seventy eight with the ball and go at six. But you know, he was an option. He's not your frontline spinner, but he is someone you can chuck the ball to and he can give you something. Um, you can't do that with. Rahul when he's no, like, he's got gloves on. Pads on. <laughs> you fool, Rahul. Um, but yeah, uh, he should be in that 11. No. Um, I think it's ridiculous that he's not, and I think there's certainly a bias there. Um, but oh well, was it like five or six? In- six, six. Ah. So, Rohit, Kohli, Rahul, Jadeja, Bumra, Shami. Like, I would even, I would argue that I don't think Jadeja gets in the best team in the tournament. Like, I, mean, I think he he's had a good tournament. Like he didn't, because Kirtley got him. Yeah, he did, yeah. <laughs> but even you could play Ratchet ahead of Jadeja, because he offers a bit of the ball as well. Like, yeah. I know he's, but like, yeah, I don't yeah, think he's probably Jadeja... like Marco Janssen in, or... Janssen, yeah. Even Klaassen's had a brilliant tournament as yeah. well. Like, I think Klaassen's more noteworthy than this as well. Um, I think, you know, Gidi, Josh Butler. And Gidi didn't have the wicket to back it up, but I just love his economy... Yeah, like, Nagidi's right great at the opening. Yeah. And it, also Maharaj as well. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think Maharaj has had a brilliant tournament. Again, I'm going to result to the stats for our listeners. Um, so Maharaj... And we're not even talking about the Australian team. Like, I, yeah, no, like, there's no Cummins, no Stark. No, like, I mean, yeah, they weren't they quite not, on the radar. No, they've not stood out to the extent of some of the other bowlers, but they've had they've been solid throughout. Yeah, I picked yeah. them over Jadeja, actually. Yeah, and like maybe no, I... Cummins gets in just because of his captaincy decision in the final at the mm-hmm. top. Like... Yeah, yeah. Um, Maharaj, just a quick note, has had a very good tournament as well. So, fifteen wickets at twenty four, but an economy rate of four point one, which you know is he's number one ranked bowler in the world as well. I think at the moment, which helps. I mean, um, maybe we put him in instead of Curtsy. Then we've got like a left. I thought, yeah, he bowled spinner, so. And we've got our next spinner. Yeah, he bowled so so well on. The semi in the semi final, and you're just giving nothing away. Um, and again, was a bit of an injury doubt coming into the tournament as well. Um, but I, just, I yeah, whoever we put in, I think there were just better options than KL Rahul and Jadeja, personally. Yeah. Um, and that's not to take anything away from India and how well they did, but I mean, they didn't win. Um, so <laughs> that's the World Cup now. I can unlike that post in the ICC, so I don't have to see it anymore. Um, have you got any final World Cup thoughts um, to sum it all up? Do you think it's been good? Do you think it's been bad? Do you think it should be improved or changed? That's a lot of questions for one question. <laughs> um, In a nutshell, quickly. I think it's been unexciting. Yeah. I don't think there's been many close games. No. It feels as though a lot of games have felt like after the first inning, you know where it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, the BBC had a good article. Yeah. Now, like looking at uh, the teams who have gotten to the semi finals since uh, like the 80s or something, yeah. it's been the same five teams that have all got there. There's only been mm-hmm. three winners. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's not been a lot of close results within like 30 runs or three wickets and something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I I think the format doesn't play well. Either no. like they're trying to like mesh a league season and a knockout. Yeah, it's more is it? Yeah. No, like the league season overall will end with whoever's been the best throughout the tournament. Yeah. Which in this case would be India. Yeah. But a knockout tournament can be fucking anyone you can just yeah, yeah. explode on and get a shock result which australia they deserve to win but it's a shock result yeah the context of the competition so i think that sort of that uh whatever that clash of ideologies between the two types of competition has held the world cup back in mm-hmm. general and how exciting it can be yeah um yeah. Also, strangely, I don't yeah. think I've really missed West Indies throughout the tournament. Yeah. Like, I've noticed... Yeah, I know. not be there every now and then. You're like... No, yeah. 
Yeah. But they wouldn't even they wouldn't have come close to that thing. Like, you know, even no. chucking them in, like what would they have done? They wouldn't have I don't think they would have called any upsets. I think they would have struggled in the same way kind of Schlanker did. Yeah, it's just like um, every now and then you think, Oh, they're not here. Yeah. Oh well, well Afghanistan and yeah. the Netherlands are yeah. doing all right. And yeah. Bangladesh are like providing yeah. some of the drama. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I, I agree, I think, on all of that. Um I think it's, you know, people like Netherlands and people, teams like Netherlands and um Afghanistan holding their own in the tournament and putting in good performances showcase that you can have these teams in a tournament. I think, yeah, it's way too long. Two months is nonsense for a World Cup. Um just ridiculous. And you know, the most it, it gets the most interesting part of the knock being knockout stages and then that's only three games and it's done. And it's like, okay, all right. <laughs> like, you know, that South Africa and South Australia game was great. India and New Zealand was great. Um, because there's stakes and everything. I just don't really understand. Um, I don't think a league really works. I know it means you get everyone playing each other. So you, technically to win you have to beat everyone, but it didn't work for India, did it? So yeah, I think more teams and then more condensed so you can have groups, stages, and then into the knockout stages. I just think you need to get to the exciting stuff quicker. And, you know, to have stakes and to have things and more teams play and more variety and old players and not just the same old recycle thing again and again. But I, I can't see it changing because they, they want England to play Australia. They want India to play Pakistan. Um, I, Yeah, I mean, we're probably Australia probably killed 50 over cricket by winning the World Cup yesterday as well because <laughs> India were not winning it. it means like we don't need this tournament anymore. So... It's I think not, it needs to change. Yeah, it's just a long time to hold a tournament where each game is lasting longer than a test match day. Yeah. Yeah. Overs wise and time wise. Yeah. And, and then to not it and for yeah, and I mean, not to have a really competitive, competitive game. game. Yeah. yeah. So you can probably count all the competitive games off one hand. Like that's the ridiculous thing. Like it, it feels like it's gone on for an eternity, <laughs> this tournament. Like so much has happened both in the world and the like just in normal life and it's, it's just you've kind of got to the end it's like oh okay now <laughs> like okay whatever <laughs> it's yeah i mean i love a world cup and i love seeing all the teams playing each other but you, you can surely condense it surely you can have more than one game going on a day um surely you can have little group stages knockouts all that kind of stuff hey oh. Like yes. having so many World Cups in such a short yeah, 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 yeah. span as well. Like the ODI format has been fine with that. Mm -hmm. Like going yeah. 2019 to 23 and 27 yeah. and the next one. And I know COVID has screwed around with the T20 yeah. World Cups, but it's leading to having three T20 World Cups and one yeah. ODI World Cup within yeah. four years. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand why they're not doing a similar format to football we've got the Euros yeah. the World Cup happening every four years mm -hmm. yeah no, and agree. like a gap year in the middle like yeah. two T20 World Cup gap ODI World Cup gap T20 World Cup yeah makes sense it's... yeah but then you, you cram in two World Cups every two years <laughs> Um, then there's also the Champions Trophy as well there's no difference to the Champions Trophy in a World Cup and just the fact that it's two less teams it's still another league thing. It's just basically the same. Like they just need to they need to change it. I think go back to if it's already two months anyway, make it a bigger tournament with more teams and more players and more at stake, more stuff. Like I I just don't give me an FA Cup knockout yeah. style. Like yeah, anything. Give me anything. India versus Belgium or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then I think it's just, then you yeah. can have your replays if they Go to a super over or something. I don't. <laughs> Anything, um, but yeah, I mean, I think we've said it. It's, it's the whole final, the way the presentation went, the way the game went, is just kind of a showcase of how forgettable this kind of tournament was. You know, that's one of the most forgettable. I've, you know, head played very well, that kind of stuff. But it's a, it was a very one sided game. Um, there wasn't really any kind of closeness at all. The presentation was a farce. Like it's. It wasn't. It it was a tournament made for India to win, basically. It was structured around that feeling and vibe that 
this India are going to win this World Cup. We've got this big old finale at the end where we've got 130,000 people and India are going to win it. It's going to be amazing. And they haven't won it all. Okay. It is just very flat. But maybe I mean, it'll be better. Maybe it won't. Not every team can go through a competition leading it and win. No. Not every That's team just right, yeah. can before outlaws. Yeah, well, true. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, that's the World Cup. I've not really got much else to say. Um, it feels like England were knocked out of it about four years ago. Um, but yeah, we've got the West Indies tour to look forward to next, which I'm sure we probably won't cover. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, I've not got anything else to say about the World Cup. Have you got anything else to say about the World Cup? Jamo um, four outlaws. No, I liked it. Four in a row. <laughs> four in a row. It was fine. It was. Mm. When I say um, I, like it, I like the fantasy in the track one. Not the actual talk. <laughs> oh, good vibes. But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be back at some point soon. And we'll, I guess, have more. Because I think our re- most recent stuff has always been reviewing Ashes and World Cup and stuff. So I think it'd be quite nice to do a show which is not centred around some big cricket event. Or just cricket. <laughs> or just cricket. Or just anything else. When rings of power out. Um, <laughs> the... <laughs> So yeah, I think that's that's mostly it from me. Um, if you want to follow us, where can people follow us, Jamie? Yes. Just not Crick Pod, Twitter, yep. Instagram, yep. TikTok, yep. YouTube, yep. Yep. podcast places. All, all the podcast places and a, and a happy 700 followers to us on TikTok. I hope you have enjoyed the memes. <laughs> um, um, did we get back there? Did we drop down one? We got we got there. I was very excited for seven hundred. I mean, someone unfollowed us. We're about to six nine nine, but now we are comfortably at seven hundred and five or something. So we're safe. Um, we're coming from yeah. a release test wicket record. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting there. Um, but yeah, thanks for listening. If you got this far, we'll be back in the future with non World Cup related content. Um, so congratulations, Australia. Um, World Cup. Lol. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and we can retire that. Yeah. Oh, I was waiting for you to congratulate me as well again. But oh, fine. yeah, congratulations. Well done, Jim. Long. 